After recording data, complete data reports and analysis using free downloadable BSL-4 analysis-only software. This tutorial covers the analysis essentials, including how to zoom in and out on data, how to auto-scale waveforms, how to show and hide channels, how to select areas of data, how to use the measurement boxes, and how to insert and edit event marks. Let's look at the user interface tools. When you open a lesson graph in the Review Save Data mode or analysis software, you'll see that our data opens with everything compressed to fit on the display screen. First, let's zoom in on a particular area of data. To zoom, we go over to our toolbar and select the magnifying glass tool. Now, we can choose an area that we're interested in, hold down the left mouse button, and drag our mouse to select an area that we're interested in zooming in on. When you release the left mouse button, you'll see the zoomed in areas of data that we've selected. When you're zooming in on data, if you accidentally left click in an area that you didn't mean to, you might find yourself in a situation like this, where some of your data has gone off screen. Don't worry, your data is not gone. To go back to the previous view, you can go up to the display menu and select zoom back until your data is back where you started, or you can go to the display menu and select Auto Scale Waveforms. Either one of these will bring your waveforms back into view. Zooming back will take you back to exactly where you started, and Auto Scaling will just bring your waveforms back into view based on your current level of zooming. Next, we can decide if we'd like to show a grid on our graph. This can be helpful when taking measurements. To show a grid, you just click on the Show Grid button. To remove the grid, you can click the Hide Grid button. Also, we can go to the Overlap and click on that to overlap our ECG and heart rate waveforms. To go back to the previous view, you can click on Split. If we'd like to go back to the compressed view with all of our data on the screen, we can go up to the Display menu, select Auto Scale Horizontal, and you'll see that brings everything horizontally back into view by compressing it. And you'll see that our display is not optimized down here on heart rate. And it's a little bit out of scale here on the ECG. To bring that in, we go again to display and select auto scale waveforms. This will again optimize our waveforms based on our current display. So again, to zoom, simply click the zoom tool, hold down the left mouse button, and drag an area to zoom. You can further zoom in by dragging additional boxes around the data that you're interested in. Now you can see our vertical scaling is going from the upper bound of 150 to a lower bound of 25. We can change this by left clicking in the vertical scaling and changing the upper and lower bounds. For example, we could change it to maybe 115 with a lower of 50 and then click OK and you'll see now our scaling is more centered on the actual values of our waveform. We can do the same thing for the x-axis which is our time axis again by clicking on the axis. When we click on the axis it'll bring up a dialog box where we can choose where to start and end our display of the x-axis. So instead of starting at 70.9 and ending at 74.9, we could choose to start it at 74 and end, for example, at 75. And what this will do is give us a zoomed in look at one of the ECG waveforms. And now if we're interested in taking a measurement, we could choose to show the grid and now what we can do is take measurements of each part of the ECG complex waveform. To do this, we get the I-beam selecting tool by clicking on it on the toolbar, and then hold down the left mouse button and drag or swipe across the data to highlight the area that we're interested in. If we wanted to look at a larger area of data, we can go up to the display menu, select Auto Scale Horizontal, and then Auto Scale Waveforms, now we could choose to zoom in on a larger area of data, again by grabbing the zoom tool and drawing a box around the area we're interested in. I'm going to hide the grid. You can see we can select 
over large areas of data or small areas of data, such as from one R peak to another R peak. You can also change the amount of space each waveform gets on your display by finding the division line and dragging either up or down to focus more on either the ECG or heart rate waveforms. In the journal, you can click on the plus button or minus button to give yourself varying views of journal versus the waveform data. Another feature is the ability to hide certain channels from view. To hide a channel, let's say we want to hide the heart rate channel, can go up to where our channel numbers are located in the top left and hold down the Alt or Option key on a Mac and click the channel. This will hide the channel from view. Again, your data is not deleted, it's just simply hidden from view. To show it again, just hold down the Alt or Option key and click and your data will come back into view. The next thing we should take a look at are the measurement boxes. The measurement boxes are shown here just above our channel numbers and event bar. The measurement boxes have two drop-down menus. The first is to select your channel. You can see our options are either channel 1 ECG, channel 40 heart rate, or SC which is the selected channel. What the selected channel means is that if we click it, whichever channel is active on our graph is going to be the channel that the measurements are taken from. So right now you'll see the selected channel is ECG, which is giving us the blue measurements. And if I were to click to select heart rate, you'll see we're now getting the green measurements. Once you've chosen your channel, you can select your measurement. Again, you can click the drop down menu and choose from a variety of available measurements. In this case, let's take a look at beats per minute. Click on beats per minute, and now we can use our selecting I-beam tool to highlight from one R peak to another R peak to get a beats per minute value of 73.6 beats per minute. Continuing down our measurement boxes, you'll see this corresponds with a delta T or time of 0.815 seconds and a peak-to-peak -peak value of 0.66040 millivolts. Another important aspect from our lesson data are the event markers. I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out on our data by autoscaling horizontal and then autoscaling the waveforms so we can see all of our event markers you'll see they're shown here in the event toolbar. The diamond markers, such as this one, are our segment labels. So each segment of the lesson will show up with a diamond marker. This one is the seated marker from when our seated data was taken. So now we can look at the other segment labels either by clicking on them, such as this one after exercise, or we can use the left and right arrow keys next to the description. So if I were to click the right, we would see that this is the deep breathing segment. So and then this one, when we click on it, we'll see is after exercise. If we wanted to edit the description, we can then click in the text bar. And let's say we want to put in that the exercise was running. We can add that to our description. And then I'm going to click back. And when we go back over to this marker, you'll see our description has been updated to include running. We also have user entered markers for the start of inhale and start of exhale. Any marker that is put in by you during a recording is going to show up as an inverted triangle. And the inverted triangles, again, when you click on them, will show a text description that can be edited. After recording, you can also put text annotations on your graph. We can click on the little A icon over here on our toolbar, and then click anywhere on the waveform to enter text. So I'm going to say start of deep breathing, and then we can click and drag this into position and anchor it to a point in the data.
The text annotation tool is helpful for marking things both on a large scale, such as the start and stop of deep breathing, and on a more zoomed in scale. For an example of that, I'm going to zoom in on one ECG complex. Here, I can then mark the different parts of the ECG waveform, such as the P wave, And again, I can anchor that to the P wave. Now when you zoom out of the data, you'll see we still see both of our annotations here on the data, even when we've compressed the zoom view. To remove annotations, you hold down the left mouse button, and you can either clear them for the selected channel, which in this case is our ECG channel, or clear all annotations from the whole graph. Do that now. And click yes. And you'll see now all of our annotations have been removed from both waveforms. For more information about using BSL-4, you can look at the available resources under the Help menu. You can also watch additional BSL-4 tutorials online at www.biopac.com slash videos.asp or contact the Biopac Support Department at support at biopac.com or 805-685-0066.